I can appreciate this comment I received on a video called Lucky Norwood Stages for Each Age, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20. Indrit Tajiki, Tajiki had this to say, quote, I guess that I am one of the most extreme cases. I started balding at age 13. I was a Norwood two and a half at age 16 and a Norwood three and a half at age 17. I am now forced to shave my head since I am Norwood four and a half with the fuse pattern baldness, including my sides. I like your videos because, oh, and my nape, he even says, like I guess the back of his neck is even. I like your videos because I don't know anybody with who I could talk about my situation and how it affected me. I would ask you a question. Do you think it is ethical to pass my extremely aggressive balding genes to possible children? Both of my grandfathers have absolutely no hair on their head." End quote. Here's my immediate response. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for being brave and vulnerable enough to leave this comment because I'm putting myself in your situation. That's got to be rough. I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat that. That's got to be rough. It's got to force you to grow up much quicker than most guys. And I think it's one of those things that either makes you or breaks you. And what I've found is most guys that go aggressively bald that young, I've noticed that it actually forces them to grow up. It actually, by default, helps them to become a better person than it does a worse person. Because you, you, can't, you can't stay middle of the road. You have to either be forced to grow up or you freak out and the sky is falling kind of thing, right? So I already have a lot of respect for you that you, can, that you are able to leave that comment and I'm not hearing language of, ah, oh, it's the end of the world. But you are asking a very relevant question and I think it's a good one. And I've, when I read that comment the first time earlier today, I remember I've already sort of covered this a little bit before where I pointed this out. If women were truly that repulsed by the thought of balding men, then why would they mate with us? Why, how would any of us still be here? And even you had mentioned both of your grandparents. Well, chances are, if they passed on that gene to you, even in their 20s, in their early 20s, they were probably noticeably balding. And it's interesting because if it was really that repulsive a thing to be young and balding, women would not marry and or mate with men with that gene if it were really that bad if it were really that repulsive. So for the fact that we're here already answers that question. Now, the other thing though, the specific question you're really asking here is, do you think it is ethical to pass my extremely aggressive balding genes to possible children? And ultimately, as I'm filtering that question, here's how I'm hearing the question. Nick, do you think it's unethical to pass on my balding genes? That's really how I'm hearing that question and that's how I wanna answer it. I definitely do not think it's unethical because if it were, then do you blame your grandfathers and grandmothers for, for being involved in you being here despite the noticeable balding pattern that your grandfathers had to have had in their teens and early 20s in the same way that you, you do? No. Here's, here's my answer. Is it unethical to pass on a, a balding gene to your potential children? No. I would actually say it's unethical not to. My answer is it's unethical not to pass on your genes to your children because of your hair loss. See, I think if we're gonna, if we were, if I said, you know what, let's put an end to balding. Guys, if you have a receding hairline, if you're noticing your hairline is starting to go back or you're balding, listen guys, do not breed. Mm -mm. If, if, if you end up getting married, adopt, but do not have your own child. What that's doing is that would be saying, I mean, that's good for adopting, absolutely. I'm all for adopting, adopting being a foster parent. But once we get into the discussion of, well, this is a bad human trait that we need to eliminate. We need to eliminate the balding gene by, by refusing to pass on our gene. Well, what other things are we gonna say? If, you're, if you must be this tall to mate, you know, this tall to mate. Uh, oh, your nose is too big? Mm, you better not mate. Like, 
what are the, what are going to be the restrictions? You know, this is just one perceived thing. And then this, what about women? What traits in women would we would should we not? So that's what we get into. We ultimately playing God in some sort of way. And I I do recognize that in the future of technology, we're going to that's going to be happening. That's going to be thing. Oh, and you you want your kid to have blue eyes? Okay, you want your son to be six foot four when it's okay. Well, we can do that. So for me, that's unethical. It's it's unethical to prevent passing on that gene because that is who you are. I believe you were created that way, and that's who you are. So that's my answer. I think it's unethical not to pass on that gene. And if it were unethical, then what about your grandparents? Thanks for asking that question. Comments right here.